Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Happiness After Codependency. I'm Marshall Bertrand. I'm your guide back to creating relationships, prosperity, and peace in your life after dealing with codependency and toxic relationships. I'm excited to be here with you today. Excuse the mess behind me. I'm in the process of packing and moving, so chaos abounds. All right. Today we're going to be talking about the fear of of other people's perspectives of us. You know, are we scared of what they think about you? That kind of thing. Because this is a very common fear, a very under, actually understandable, logical fear to have, especially if we've grown up in systems where love, connection, attachment, and our value was based on what we did and how we made other people feel. So we're going to explore that here today before we get to, the, to that. I need to share this out to the community here real quick. So if you're looking for a community where you can find further guidance and tools from me, more support in your journey beyond codependency, and a safe haven where you can share what's going on in your world, come join us in the community. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And also in the description, check out the rules for the community. Make sure the community is aligned with what matters to you and what you need in a support community. And also check out the announcements because the Happiness After Codependency System is open for enrollment. So come join us. I'm going to get this shared out here real quick. Just got to click the buttons. And that's the right group. And we are good to go. So it's nice to see you guys. Let me know how you're doing in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. So this idea of being, you know, I'm scared of what they think about me. I'm scared of their opinion, their point of view, that kind of thing. This can have a lot of power in our world. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that is very much present or has been present in your life where someone's perspective grips you emotionally, like your body seizes around it. And you're like, ah, no, they don't like me. That means something or that's it's a scary idea that people would reject you or disagree with you or be disappointed with you or not like what you do what you say what you think how you show up because if that's you you're not alone this is actually a really prevalent kind of fear a lot of us carry with us and this comes from how we were treated by people whom we had an emotional bond to so we all have three primary necessities in our life that we are attempting to nurture, to keep, to care for in our world. And the first one is a sense of safety. We want safety physically, emotionally, and in our relationships. The second need we have is connection. We want to belong. We want to have shelter. We want to, to have community, to know that we have uh, value socially and that we are valued socially and the third need we have is identity now, identity is also synonymous with value or worth and the reason why is because identity is an outgrowth of that value when i have a sense of value or a particular sense of value that shapes the way i see myself and that shapes the way i show up in the world so if i have a shame-based value sense of value i'm going to show up in ways that reflect that in some way but if i have a love based or warmth towards myself and my value then i'm going to show up differently these three needs are highly influenced initially in our world especially as children by the way people we are bonded to react to us so if i was bonded like for instance i was highly bonded to my mother and so i sought safety through her connection through her and my own sense of value and identity through her as a small child and as i grew up and began to mature into my own self i started to resource that a little more internally like i didn't need mom around so much to do so i could do abc or have abc or be abc things like I could go to school and feel safe get on the bus and feel safe um, take risks on my own adventure into the world because you know, I had learned that I have a safe shelter I could go to, as well as, as um, I could also provide safety for myself. Well, what happens to us is when we have a primary bonded parent or authority, someone we respect, 
someone that we have relied on for this th for these three necessities of safety connection and identity well, we've relied on them and they come at us with an at, with a perspective with feedback with something that says i reject you i don't like you i disapprove of you that shakes our foundation of safety connection and identity and that gives birth to this fear of other people's opinions cuz now we believe that other people's opinions define our value, establish our level of safety, and then regulate the kind of connection we can have with that individual. And if this is, starts out with our primary bonded parent, a caregiver, or with an authority like in school or a, a community organization you're a part of, that's very threatening to, to you. It's very threatening to the nervous system and to the body because now our sense of survival is in question. Our sense of safety, connection, and identity are destabilized. And we don't find reassurance. We don't find consolation. We don't find understanding. Instead, we're, we're wrestling with that rejection that comes up there in our world. So this is why we fear the thoughts and opinions of other individuals. Because we believe that it defines us in some way. It establishes our level of safety in some way and regulates or limits that connection. This also gives us a hint about our own freedom and where we can go to resource or build our own capacity for safety, connection, and identity that is separate from those individuals but is more interdependent both within ourselves. We can internalize our safety and our capability of building that out. We can internalize and cultivate our own innate value and then become more proactive and empowered in building the connections we seek in our life so that we become surrounded by people who like us for who we are. This gets us out of a lot of primary codependent behaviors like people-pleasing, avoiding conflict, trying to control outcomes, trying to enmesh with individuals or merge with them so we can feel whole, feel like we have identity, feel like we have completeness. And it gets us connected to ourself. And this is part of our growing up kind of thing. Because in a lot of ways, as we move out of codependency, we're really outgrowing the need for our codependent habits in order to get these three necessities met. Instead, we're learning ways or healthier approaches that get these needs met that also supply additional safety, connection, and identity for ourselves. So we don't have to give ourselves up. We don't have to tolerate something that's harming us in order to try to get that breadcrumb of connection or love or approval. It also gets us out of that big trap, the approval rejection trap. Because these, these are the same coin. The coin is value. Am I valuable? Yes, if I'm approved. No, if I'm rejected. See? And... Well, that coin completely depends on the idea that someone else defines these things for us. So let me know what you think about in the comments. I'm going to check them here in a moment. Pam says, this makes so much sense in terms of what I grew up with, with no safety connection or positive identity, external control, no personal empowerment, coupled with terror. This is why innate value is such a foreign concept. Absolutely, Pam. Because it's all externalized. It's, it's something that was not brought into our world. It wasn't brought into yours. You weren't brought into contact or understanding with it. Instead, you had to fight for some value. You had to carve out a sense of value in the world so that you could survive and take up some space and have some ability to provide for yourself. So, yep, definitely on that. My friends, it's okay if you're scared of what other people think about you. This, is, this fear is a result of what you have been through. It is not a result of something wrong with you. Now, most of us have this fear. I want to reinforce that. This is more of a universal fear than you think. Now, I'm going to put a little nuance on this now. There's a difference between fearing what someone thinks about us and being concerned about the perspective someone has about us. And this, this difference here is dependent on, well, 
the relationship and what we are putting on the relationship, what kind of significance or meaning we're giving to it about our identity, about our safety, and about our connection. So I'll give you an example. So growing up, especially in my teen years, the approval or rejection of a, of a woman or a girl would greatly affect my sense of value because I had determined that their approval defined me as a, an attractive person. They defined my attractiveness, my appeal, my sense of being a man, that kind of thing. The culture I grew up in, that's what I was taught. I was taught that a female's approval determined me in these ways. As I've grown into more adulthood, now I'm in my 40s, it's not so much that. I'm not interested in whether or not I'm defined that way. What I want to understand, especially if I'm in a relationship, what impact am I having on this person and how does that impact how they see me? I want to understand how they are, their lived experience of me, basically. So in a personal relationship, I'm, I'm more interested in, do they feel loved? Because if I, I love them, I feel that love for them, and they're not feeling that something's wrong. That's where I become concerned about their opinion of their experience with me. I'm not necessarily completely oriented towards the idea that they define me. They don't. I have my own definition, my own sense of value, my own resource ability to create connection and safety in my life and make connection with my own innate value. So my, my concern about what a person thinks about me is no longer about defining these things in my life. It's about understanding their lived experience with me and whether or not that's lining up with my intention and my values. Let me know if that makes sense because that's more of a spur of the moment kind of thought there. I didn't really <laughs> script that out or think about that. Just going to throw it out there. So my friends, if you have this fear of what other people think about you, let's first start with acknowledging it. Letting it be real without the shame, without the guilt, without the judgment or the condemnation we might carry for ourselves. It's like, yeah, what other people thought about me mattered to me growing up. It mattered to me what my friends thought. It matters to me what they think now. So we can appreciate that. We can, we can care for this part of ourselves that hasn't experienced value, connection, identity, and safety that is intrinsically its own. It's had to seek that through other people to have that. So we can care for it. Then we can legitimize it. Yes, that was real. We were rejected and it hurt and it scared us. It left us alone. It th it, we felt threatened that we might not have more friends or we might not ever be loved for who we are by our parents. Things like that. We can legitimize it. Legitimization means making it real and valid to you. So you start to believe your own lived experience. And now, when we're practicing this slowly, gently, bit by bit at a time, there's going to be a shift that enters your awareness eventually. It may take some time. It may happen immediately. Acknowledge whatever that is. Just in doing this right now with myself, as I've been describing it to you, I have felt a softness enter my, my solar plexus. It's like, we're okay. We're okay if we're rejected. We're okay if we're approved of. I'm seeing that and sensing that I don't need that anymore. It's a real warmth regulation and internal connection to myself mm -hmm. now we let that integrate that's the i and the ali practice we acknowledge we legitimize we integrate we allow ourselves to grow a little farther outside that ex that conclusion that their approval their opinion their rejection defines anything especially about our value. Because when we take control of our worth, we start to own it, we start to cultivate our connection to our innate value. We're not building self-esteem here, guys. What we're doing is we're moving into a belief that, hey, I have intrinsic, immutable, infinite worth. Now my job is to connect with the experience of that and start to understand it. Very 
can be a very, very challenging foreign concept. That's okay if it is, because <laughs> it still gets me sometimes. Innate value is not changeable. It's present. It's part of us. It's innate. It's born into us. When we were created, we had it. Nothing can change that. And our work is to connect with that and understand and come to know it, love it, and follow it. So when we take back control of our value and we start to connect with that, it raises safety and it clarifies connection. Because now we're maturing into a deeper sense of ourself. We no longer are seeking their opinion to validate and justify ourselves. Instead, we're seeking to understand their opinion to see how we're relating with them and how they're relating with us so we can determine if they're a good fit for further connection because they're safe. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments below. Hi, Shani. Hi, Pamela. This is what we're doing here. This is a big shift from going, I fear what people think about me to I'm curious what that is so I can understand my, their lived experience of me and whether or not they how they align with what I value, what I desire, my own relationships. Which throws in another nuance. You're going to find as you do this that you do you get the right not to care about what most people think about you, especially if they're not in a primary relationship with you with either being a significant other, maybe a child, um, maybe a professional relationship like a therapist or a coach. Um, and even then, you're still maintaining the autonomy of your value, but you're more interested in that impact. What is the quality of our experience together and what does that mean? Is that aligned with what I value? And then everything outside of this, like maybe you could even include best friends and stuff in that circle. But outside of that circle, it's more like, oh, that person doesn't like me on Facebook. Okay, cool. I can go out with my life. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't have an intrinsic impact on the connections you have, whether or not you're in a safe relationship with someone, and that you're cultivating your own value despite what someone else might think. When we autonomize our value, we make it independent of other people's points of view. We get in real contact with our sovereignty, our personal power. We don't need codependency anymore. What we get to have at that point is power, healthy personal power that creates interdependency based on what we value and what matters to us. And that's key there to breaking free. Yes, we decide our value, not them. No one effectively has the power to define our value. We are the ones who are do we're doing one of two things. We're either agreeing with it or disagreeing with another person's perspective on ourselves. That's where our power action is. And if we want to get into what's called congruence with ourselves, alignment with ourselves, harmony with ourselves, then if someone's like, mm, Marshall, you're a bad blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, no, I disagree. Now I'm in congruence with my, my own value because I know my value. My value is sovereign to me. And my value guides and inspires my actions and my choices. So I know how I'm attempting to show up. And if someone wants to label me as the bad person, then cool. That doesn't mean it's a fact. Um, and we can go in a little more nuanced gray space there rather than that black component. We can go into someone just doesn't like what I do or how I do it. Cool. That isn't a judgment of right and wrong. That is a judgment of compatibility. It's like, okay, cool. Now you know what works for you or what doesn't. May you find what works for you. There is no internalization of, oh, something's wrong with me. i got to change this. It's more like, yeah, difference. And that's okay. They're not wrong. I'm not wrong. We just have clarity. So now that fear of what other people think about us, or, or well, in my own particular case, think about me, is smaller and smaller and smaller because I know I can care for my value, my connections and my safety, and I'm not wholly dependent on other people for connection and safety. I can resource that myself and that my value is my job, not theirs. So there you go, guys. Thank you for being here. Today's training video. Let me know your thoughts below and how this added to your world. If you want to go deeper 
in this kind of work and becoming free of that fear of other people's opinions and actually knowing your value, following it, and becoming who you are from it. That's what the happiness after codependency system is built on. It's built to bring you back to you so you can create relationships that matter to you, prosperity that you love and enjoy, and the peace that you deserve. So enrollment is open for that. We start August 15th. So we got some time. But the link is below on YouTube, above on Facebook, and get more information there about how to enroll. So go gently with yourselves, my friends. Take time to retrieve your value from other people's opinions. Give yourself a chance to disagree with their opinions and see what that feels like for you. And if you're having big activation around people and their opinions, that indicates, especially if it's paralyzing and it's really arresting, that indicates that there's trauma talking in the background. And I recommend talking with your trauma therapist about that, as well as beginning to cultivate regulation in your nervous system for that. And you can find tools for that on my website, link above on Facebook, below on YouTube to help you there. So go gently. I will see you guys in our next training video. Have a great day.